Turkish Airlines. Seven days. B-Win. Endesa. Official global sponsors in association with the Turkish Airlines Euro League. Well, good evening and welcome to the Fernando Buesa Arena in Vitoria Gasteiz, the capital of the Basque Country. It's the final four weekend in the Turkish Airlines Euro League, and tonight's second game features ten-time winners and defending champions Real Madrid versus seven-time title holders. Seska Moscow in a rematch of the 2018 final at this very stage of the competition last year. Well, you can see the teams now arriving to this arena here in the Basque Country. These scenes filmed earlier tonight, and this is the team that are going to try to erase the game that they lost at this stage of the competition last year. Seska Moscow, seven-time winners of this competition. Again, these scenes filmed earlier tonight, the arrival of Seska. Well, buenas noches and welcome to Spain, everybody. A very warm welcome to any Russian viewers joining us tonight. Dobra uh, to them. My name is Liam Candy. I'm in the commentary position tonight for the second semifinal, semifinal B. And joining me in the commentary spot is my partner and 1999 champion, George Zidek. Thank you, Liam. Good evening, and it's great to be here in Victoria. Ladies and gentlemen, let's Coach Atutis, the fifth time in a row that he's been here with the club. It speaks volume. I mean, Ceska Moscow has just evolved into a dynasty. It's two streaks of eight, actually, I think. They were 16 out of 17. That was broken off by a year of absence from even playoffs. So this is this is what here we go into the final four record head to head between the two clubs with seven victories going to Ceska side and 10 titles going to the Real Madrid. Well, it's a good little graphic, and uh, probably more importantly is what you and I were talking about previously is the head-to-head the -head against Coach Atutis and Coach Lasso, and Atutis certainly has the advantage there, having won seven times out of ten games. As we look at the starting five here for Madrid, it's Campazzo at the point. Randolph will come in and play the three spot. Fernandez at the shooting guard. Jeffrey Taylor will provide a little bit of defense in the four, and here's the shot blocker at the bat, Tavares. And there's Coach Lasso. He is from Vitoria originally, so a chance for him to bring Madrid here back to his hometown. Here's Cesca Moscow. Nando De Colo making the start as he did the last two playoffs games with the point guard, Daniel Hackett at the off guard. Will Clyburn, the most used, the most heavily used man on the roster at the small forward. Nikita Kurbanov that has started every game that he's played for Coach Etudis. And Othello Hunter at the center position. Coached by Dimitris Iktudis, the second Greek coach that has managed to win your league outside of coach Georgios Bartsokas. So he's uh, going at it. Another chance to go for his second title. The last one came, as you said, before 2016 in Berlin. They beat Fenerbahce on that occasion. Of course, the Tutis also appeared as an assistant coach with Panthenikos five times, so he knows this competition very well. He'll know the atmosphere well, and he'll certainly be a leader here for this Seska team that's talented. Three scorers in the top ten in the EuroLeague this season. That is amazing. Number two, number four, and number nine top scores. Three scores out of top ten in the EuroLeague. That is amazing. Here is the head-to-head -head between Dimitris Itudis of Ceska Moscow and Pablo Lasso, just giving the last instructions to his players before we go on the court. Well, the players will make their way onto the floor here. As we can see, the colors of Madrid proudly flying here in the arena. They've made that journey from the center of the country here to the northern part. We're in the Basque country. The first time ever that the city of Vitoria has hosted this competition. Of course, deep pedigree here with the Saski Basconia Club. And we see the players now making their way out onto the floor. It'll be Real Madrid, Los Blancos in the white uniforms, and the horses of Seska in the red. We'll pause momentarily to pay our respects to the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague theme song, and the players will come out and join the one-team youngsters here on the floor.
So there we are. It was the EuroLeague anthem. And Liam, if you ask me about the players to watch in the first five minutes, I would tell you Nando De Colo would be on the Tesca side. Can he match his performance from the last two playoff games that he played on this court right here in Victoria? That's a player to watch here. Uh, Mate Bothauser, Boris Rizik, and Ann Panther. Those are the three referees for tonight. And on the other side for Real Madrid, I'll be keen on watching Facundo Campazzo, the MVP of April. Can he duplicate the performances that he's managed to put together against Panathinaikos all Pop Athens in playoffs? That is the question I have on my mind. Well, stepping into a leading role as Campazzo, when he won this title in 2018, he was a sort of periphery player making contributions, but now he is a leader. Well, in a city founded by a king from a region that has never hosted a EuroLeague final, the two most decorated princes of European basketball start their quest to rest another European crown. And the first possession to the Whites. It's Los Blancos of Real Madrid against the horses of Seska. As Seska settle in to man-to-man -man defense. As the first possession goes to Real, let's see if they try to establish the game on the inside. Go to Tavares now after the pick and roll. Little stop and pop from Capazzo, which hits the heel of the rim. Offensive rebound for Tavares. And Real will reset. And that, that's the pattern in play between the two players. Campazzo to Tavares, a strong finish in the lane. See righty penetration and a kick. Thank you very much for Eddie Tavares. First two points for Real. Real draw first blood. First possession here for Seska. We've got some action off the floor. I beg your pardon, off the ball. And I think it's Taylor just trying to fight through his screen. The sparks are flying. You see right here on the replay. He's trying to get as close as he can to Nando De Colo and just makes a foul of coming across the Clyburn. So Taylor draws the assignment to try to neutralize De Colo. Here's Hackett between the circles. He'll get a rub, get to the free throw line, a little leaner, and he earns himself a trip to the line. Nice step through move for Daniel Hackett, a player that really does not have an easy role on the Seska star studded roster. He comes, in, he comes in for about 15 minutes of the game lately in the second half of the season and really making the most of his minutes. Well, fans, remember you can track all the live statistics in today's game on the EuroLeague website. It's all the w's.euroleague.net. Just click on the link and you can track the stats. As you watch the images and listen to the sounds of the continent of Europe's premier basketball competition. We haven't had a chance to speak about the two meetings that they had, these two clubs had in the regular season. I think it's important to say that Seska has won both of those games. And the second stat that comes to mind, they out-rebounded Real Madrid in both of those games. So if something Real Madrid is watching, it is rebounding category. Round 10, Seska won in Madrid. And they run one again in round 22. Here's Fernandez. Oh, oh my! Rudy Fernandez goes to the 10, and Tavares sends it in. Spectacular basket by the man from Cape Verde. And the game's underway here in semifinal two in Vitoria. He rolls with the elevator. He just kept going up and up. The Colo shot hits the heel of the rim, and then Tavares now cleans the backboard. Sends a little message to Othello Hunter. Capazzo's pass finds the hands of Taylor. And Fernandez now will go to work with the high ball screen. A great pass by Fernandez, but Taylor can't finish off the play. Good vision by Fernandez, and back comes Seska. That's a gutsy take right there by Daniel Hackett against Tavares, but that's you, what you have to do against a shot blocker of a caliber as Tavares. You have to attack him, Liam. Look at that right here. You cannot go away from him. You have to attack the body. Draw contact. I love the fact that, uh, George, that Hackett goes to the far side of the rim as well. Maybe use the rim to try and guard off the defensive hands of Tavares. He's fearless. I mean, I, I've heard so many compliments there from Coach this about his work ethic, about his mindset. He's defensive mindset, and he comes on the floor he just really provides a defensive spark to his club you know what i'm going to give you credit for that you know he's a usc guy and you from ucla giving praise to the enemy unbelievable george you're you are doing a great job being even-handed here i have grown into a politically correct man liam of course you won the collegiate title with ucla when you're a player and you won this title in 1999 and here we have a chance to see who's going to win it in 2019. Capazzo gets deep, and he draws himself a trip to the line. Yeah, the foul was by Hackett, and Hackett was trying to call, make it, plead his case that the shot was before, the foul was before the shot was taken, but 
Referee Ann Panther was a different opinion, so she's sending Facundo Campazzo to the line for two free throws. Really some high percentage shots here for Real Madrid early on. They are really trying to work the ball on the inside, which I like. I don't think you want to try to start with an outside scoring. For example, like Anadolu Efez, they really working patiently the ball to the inside. Campazzo nets both free throws. Well, of course, if you get a player like Eddie Tavares under the basket, I mean, that's a clear strategy. Well, Clyburn in space, and he knocks down the uncontested three. We're knotted up here at six each in the opening minutes in the first quarter. He took it absolutely nobody close to him to guard him, and Will Clyburn, number two as far as three-point percentage. Fernandez tries his hand at a wide open three. It strikes the iron and back comes Clyburn. He'll ride the little drag screen here from Othello. Again, in the same spot. And this one rims out for Clyburn. That was a step back shot off the dribble. A little bit different situation than a moment ago. Now, Campazzo wants to slow the game a little bit. He'll call the half court set. Both teams have stayed in man-to-man -man defense in the opening minutes. No turnovers on either side. It tells you about the composure of the players. Campazzo kicks his dribble. And there it is, the commentator's curse from my partner. Good steal here by Daniel Hackett. Hackett kicks to the corner to Colo. Second opportunity to knock down a three. Missed it, pass ahead to Taylor in transition. And Taylor misses his second layup. That's a second down, and he's really missed a high percentage chance. That... Whoa, Andy Tavares with another block. Well, Tavares pinned it to the backboard. He welcomes Othello Hunter to Northern Spain. And now we've got a foul here. This one, I think, George, is going to be on Hackett. And if it is, it's the second personal foul on Daniel Hackett. But I don't think that Coach Atutis really cares about it. As we see the block by Tavares just puts it against the backboard. As Othello Hunter kind of loses the slip. The ball slips out of his hand, so he couldn't really go for the dunk. And here is the penetration by Rudy. And I think the foul's going to be on Othello Hunter right here as he reaches in. Well, Fernandez will toe the line for two free throws. But, you know, Tavares' factor has not been a factor in the first two games of Cesca against Real Madrid. He's played only 14 minutes, and he's at one point in game number one and three points in, in the second meeting of these clubs. So, Eddie Tavares has found it hard to play against Cesca Moscow this season. Well, he certainly started brightly here. And he's opening first few minutes in Vitoria. Fernandez knocks down both free throws. And Hackett now will go down into the low post. He's got a size advantage against Campazzo. Tavares stays in a help position. Clyburn at the free throw line. He'll go at Randolph. And we've got a foul from Fernandez with a reach and two shots now for Seska. That was almost a miscommunication there as. Daniel Hackett was posted up. I don't think Clyburn was ready for that pass off. He collected the ball and just drove to the basket and got two free throws out of it. Well, George, these two teams, as we mentioned, this is a replay of the 2018 semifinal. Of course, they also met in 2017. They played in a third place game in Istanbul. Seska with a comfortable 24 point win. Well, I think, Liam, that a lot of the players and coaches and personnel just really have talked about the last year's semifinal just leaving a bitter taste in, in, in their mouth because it was a perfect season. They finished number one in the standings and then just. A couple of the players go down with the injuries, didn't arrive at the Final Four in a perfect form, and lost the, lost the game. Well, this year, the two teams finished in second and third position after the regular season. Seska with that playoff win against Basconia, Real Madrid, swept Panthenaikos. De Colos pass is intercepted by Randolph. Absolutely nobody showed there for Nando De Colo after the penetration where he got behind the basket into a tough situation. Each team now with a turnover. And Capazzo now at the top of the key. Randolph gets a touch. Good closeout by a Hunter. Shot clock counting down. Fernandez gets in the lane. Oh. He gets it to go. Wow, Liam, that was a lot of contact on that drive and the shot. Rudy finished it with his left. Fernandez. What an acrobatic shot. Yeah, Fernandez rocks the cradle. A little English with the left hand, and he gets the shot to drop. And then Tavares with another negation against Decolo. Hey, last year we called him Captain Swad, but it is Surgeon Squad right here. 
making his presence felt defensively, as you would expect. Sergeant Swat imposing some discipline on the Seska players. There goes the Colo. He tried to beat him with his quickness, but Eddie was ready for that. Look at that. He goes high, and it is no, 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 sir. Taylor, good defense by Korbanov. Now Fernandez picks up the loose ball. Compazzo lines up a three, and he drops it. That's good patience right there. Good bump fakes, sharing the ball. This is the Real Madrid basketball. That's why they are number one in the EuroLeague in SS. Look at the replay right here. That's the extra pass by Rudy Fernandez. Wide open in the corner. Facundo Campazzo just nailing it down. Look at that from a different angle. A perfect Coach, shooting for him. Coach Atutis has seen enough, and he wants to take a timeout. You score here. The first intermission, 13-7 to Real. Well, the Walter Tavares package here, he's been so influential in the opening minutes on both ends of the floor here with an easy flush off the pass from Compazzo. This one he has to go up, an extra step on the ladder from Fernandez. Tavares scoring two points inside the halo, but he's been so influential here on the backside of the defense. He'll step and challenge Othello Hunter. And there it is right now. Four points, three rebounds, and a couple of blocks. Good, good performance from the young man from Cape Verde. Absolutely, and I think it's, it just duplicates his effort in the semifinal last year when he was absolutely crucial on defensive end. It's really changing so many shots and a complete perception of the game. You really have to think what you're going to do if you're coming down the lane. Well, that's just it, George. Not only does he block shots, but he makes people think maybe alternate shots throw the ball out and so uh, doesn't always have to block a shot but the fact that he's at the back of the defense really and it gives his teammates confidence to play hard defense on the perimeter so Rodriguez and Hines come in for Seska here's the Colo off a stagger screen a little behind the back pass to Clyburn Clyburn wants to go at Randolph and Randolph stands tall good defense by Anthony Randolph that was absolutely a great defense they're solid defensively Campazzo oh he faked the pass to Tavares but he couldn't get the teardrop to fall a great move by Campazzo just to split the defense just did not have the energy to he was going left and was trying to finish with his right that's a very difficult shot to complete if you're floating in the air now here's Sergio Yui George and he's such a good player as Yui but he's had a Injury riddled season. He didn't really play. In fact, he didn't play at all in the two games between these two teams in the season. So we'll see what he's like here in the playoffs. In the final four in Vitoria. That shot by Higgins with his first attempt is short. No second chances there for Tesca in the game in round 22. In their second game, they had 19 offensive rebounds, but nothing so far. That was a three pointer missed by Anthony Randolph, the top scorer of Real Madrid. On the inside, it is to Decolo, and this one is going in. That Tavares blocked it after the ball hit the backboard. I think that's a clear call. We're sitting pretty close to the action. So we're going to take a look here, an official review. The players are appealing, but the referees say it's a goaltending. Let's just clarify the rule, George. Once the ball strikes the rim, anybody can touch it. It was off the backboard. You cannot do that. And well, Tavares it knows it. So if the ball strikes the backboard, you have to wait till it touches the rim. And hopefully that basket won't prove influential in this one. Oh, oh. Anthony Randolph hard to the cylinder. He can't finish, but Tavares with the stick back. He took a quick step, was trying to elevate over Hines. Had a good challenge there defensively by Kyle. El Chacho shot drops. What a creative player, Leon. Did you see that ball fake, bump fakes? I mean, just floating in the air. He's so much fun to watch. We've got some contact off the ball. Looks like an offensive foul call. I think he's going on Rudy off the ball. There it is against Rudy. He's not happy about it. That's number two foul on Fernandez. He's going to go and take a rest here as coach Pablo Lasso has to be concerned about his foul situation. The second foul on Fernandez. He'll get a little bit of pine time. 
Madrid shows some pressure up the floor. Good matchup here, Sergio Huey. And Sergio Rodriguez, two former teammates from Madrid going at it here head to head. Carroll comes in for Madrid. And Rodriguez with his first three ball attempt off the mark. Madrid clear their boards. The Real's going to have to be careful with their defense because Cesca is in the bonus. You don't want to send Cesca to the free throw line. Stop and pop from Anthony Randolph. That shot strikes the rim. And Higgins rises for the rebound. Under three to play here in this opening stanza. Madrid up by four. Only one offensive rebound for Cesca and three for Real Madrid. Both teams just really doing a good job of boxing out. Clyburn now with some length over Carroll. Wants to take him into the paint. Right-handed jump hook. No good. Hunter can't convert. And a long pass ahead to Randolph for the flush. And an add one as Alex Peters commits the foul on the flush by Randolph. Alec Peters did not try to challenge him in the air. As you see the long pass here from Muir. It's Randolph running. He gets the contact. It goes over Alec Peters. Look at the replay one more time from a different angle. Peters tries to sprint back, get there defensively, and he just gets a piece of the body of Randolph, who actually uses his body to elevate even further. Great vision by Sergio Yui, and you love this too, George, with the big man. You know, Randolph's at number four, as you can see. Gabriel Deck step into the game. You love it when your big men run the floor. They're rim runners, they get to the halo to get easy opportunities just like that. But it's Real Madrid basketball. Get the rebound. That's why they are number one defensive rebounding team in the competition and run. Make some assists, easy baskets. That's a motto, that's a mantra for Real. Well, now they have that seven point lead. It's the largest lead they've enjoyed. Hines Whoa. steps through. Tavares contests, and Hines can't convert. And there it is, George. It's Tavares who doesn't get the block, but the defensive presence forces the miss. I think he just stepped on the foot of somebody on landing. You see it right here. It's not a full block, exactly what you talked about. But it's such a strong challenge that Kyle Hines doesn't finish a, a dunk that would have been easy. Right there, all ball. A perfect defensive stop right there by, by Tavares. Well, Hines elevates, and Tavares goes right to the rack with him. And I'll tell you what, I'm looking at the stats right now, Liam, and it's, it counts as the block as it was all ball, and the performance index rating for Walter Tavares is up to 15, and we are still in the first quarter. A terrific start by Tavares. Korbanov's going to step back into the game. Korbanov was with the club back in 2006 when Seska lifted the yearly crown. It's a tense season here for Nikita Kurbanov, one of the most experienced Russian players on the roster. Now Rodriguez between the circles, guarded by Carroll. Wards him off with a screen. And the baby jump shot. Rodriguez struggling to find his touch. He's missed three shots. Good hustle play by Randolph. And back come Real Madrid. Huey. His runner is good. That's a mature play there by Sergio Yu. He just kind of waited and waited, and the defense parted, so he took a shot. Right now, Real have got Seska doubled up. Hines had to get it off quick. You can see he wanted to get the ball out of his hands before Tavares could close out. Good finish by Kyle Hines. You have to go quick against Tavares, or you got to get a piece of him. Rodriguez now starts the offense. Carroll up a down screen. His shot is short, and that's what he's on the floor to do, George. J.C. Carroll is a catch-and-shoot player. Absolutely. The shooters are known to shoot the ball. Oh, and immediately there's Sergio Rodriguez coming back with a three ball. He must have heard you, George. That's his first three of the night. He finally found his shooting form. And this will bring a timeout here from Coach Lasso. You can see Hines sets the screen. Rodriguez drops down to three. And a good performance there by the side ball screen. The Seska teammates really enjoyed that, that's for sure. That's a three ball in transition. Very valuable points here for Seska. And already Sergio Rodriguez matching the points total that he scored in the semifinal. So here we are in the first quarter taking the timeout. Seska Moscow 16, Real Madrid 22. Subida. Gabi, en vez de aquí, venirte por aquí, vente al centro. Vale? Para que se convierta. O en un pin down o en una salida de tres sin poder cambiar el chat. ¿Vale? Bien. En transición, 
Si la llevas en carrera, como has hecho el picarro contra él, también puedes meter cero para dar y para la salida. ¿De acuerdo? Bien, hay que estar un poco más cerca del picarro de Chacho, porque Eddie se lo están poniendo muy alto y consigue este tiro. Ya le tiro. Well, George, the measure of a good timeout now as Pablo Lasso calls the timeout is can you come out and execute a good offense, get a clean look as Gustavo Ion will come in and he will replace Eddie Tavares. Seska extends some pressure up the floor as Sergio Yui gets it across the midcourt stripe. Randolph trying to establish position on the low block with Alex Peters. Yui, off balance shot. That's no good. Good defense by Seska. Quick outlet to Rodriguez who wants to run. Seska is looking to score some transition points. Any easy baskets they can get before the defense of Real establishes is a plus. Less than a minute to play here in the opening stanza. Rodriguez around the screen from Hines. He gets in the lane and he gets some love from the rim. And he is feeling good. Chacho Rodriguez, the master creator in the lane, going for the score. Good two for one opportunity here by Seska as they manage the clock well. They should get one more possession as we wind down the first quarter. Sergio Yui, let's fly from deep. And that one is short. Good hustle play by Gabriel Deck, who buys another offense here. Ion kicks to Deck. Deck kicks it. And maybe a little bit too unselfish here from Real Madrid. Randolph with the left hand to jump hook. That's off the mark. And Seska now with a chance to get the closing basket of the opening quarter. Well, maybe a little bit of unselfish play there from Real Madrid in that last possession. At the end of the first quarter of play, Real Madrid up four points here in Vitoria. Well, first quarter highlights in the second semifinal tonight from the Fernando Buesa Arena. First possession to Real Madrid, and they led throughout the whole 10 minutes of this quarter. And this man here, Walter Tavares, influential on both ends of the floor, scoring on one end and denying on the other. A little bit of magic by Fernandez, and DeColo joined the block party. Eddie Tavares with a stick back, a couple of flushes. Here's a look at the numbers. What jumps out at you here, George, after this first quarter of play? Well, a bit of a struggle there for Real Madrid from beyond the three. One for five, only the shooters of Real Madrid, not of a factor so far. Well, for the first time ever through sports technology, the Turkish Airlines flight time leaderboard shows you the total time athletes spend in the air. Turkish Airlines, enjoy the flight. We'll get a look at the leaderboard to see who hangs in the air the longest. Tavares has made life difficult for anybody trying to take off around him. And there it is, Walter Tavares, 4.18 seconds. He does Hernandez it. and Capazzo, look at it. It's top four to Real Madrid. Clyburn in fifth there with Seska. Well, it tells you how active the defense of Real Madrid has been in the first quarter. If we see Trey Tompkins, number 33, making the first appearance in the white jersey. But how about Walter Tavares? He doesn't have to jump too much, but he gets the, the highest hang time of all the players on the floor. I'm not too sure if he could get over the Sunday paper, but as you say, he doesn't have to. He might just get a little bit higher than you, big fella. Two meters, 21. You cannot teach height. Two That's what I used 21. to hear. Exactly right. He's the tallest player in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague this season. Of course, Tibor Pleist with Anadolu FS, who won earlier tonight. And a shot there off the mark by Corey Higgins. And he played by Gabriel Deck. Well, let's get the fives sorted out to see who's on the floor here to start the second quarter. For Real Madrid, it's Gabriel Deck, Sergio Yui, Trey Tompkins with his first action, Gustavo Ayon, and JC Carroll. Seska come out with Peters, Higgins, Hines, Rodriguez, and Korbanov. And a great first shot here for Real Madrid for JC Carroll. As you said before, anytime he steps on the floor, he is looking to score. There's your starting five here to come out in the second quarter. 
Rodriguez shimmies in the lane, rises, and Carroll with a block shot. Now, Higgins will probe. He'll step through, and he'll earn himself a trip to the line. But you have to like the aggressiveness of Tesca on that situation. They tried two drives, got denied one time, but just kept coming. Here's the block by J.C. Carroll getting all ball on Chacho Rodriguez in the lane. But the ball got picked up by Corey Higgins, and he ends up on the free throw line with two free throws. Higgins has had a terrific season. He's averaged 14.8 points per game. And as we were saying, there are three players from the Seska team who are in the top 10 in scoring. DeColo and Higgins with 14 and a half and 14.8 respectively. But I said it before, Liam, you know, what I like to track is the progress that the player is making in his career. It was 9.2 up to 9.5 in the second season with Seska. Then last year was a huge jump up to 14.2 and this year up to 14.6 so Corey Higgins just really working so hard in the offseason and during the season of course to make himself better yeah certainly maturing into a go-to scorer in his fourth year league season is Higgins on the low post now Tompkins just muscles his way in. He's just too strong for Alex Peters. But a, such a soft touch there on the step back. Trey Tompkins had really soft touch big man shooting. Both teams maintain that man to man defense. Rodriguez drops a dime inside. And Hines with the finish. He was expecting a challenge right there on the, on the shot, but Ion just stayed on the floor and allowed him the easy two. Gabriel Deck now on the low post. Spins to the baseline, hangs in the air, it won't fall. Good defense by Higgins, who's guarding in a low post. Now DeColo will let it fly. And the baseline referee says he's just earned himself a trip to the charity stripe. And that's not a bad option here for Pablo Lasso as you're looking at the replay of that situation a moment ago. Now DeColo, all-time leading scorer in EuroLeague from the free throw line. 93%. This year, he's number three, if you can't believe that. But, now you're yeah. going to ask me who the top two are, aren't you? That's the trivia question right now. J.C. Carroll, number one. Wow. Sergio Yui, number two. Wow. And well, there's J.C. Carroll right there. So Nando Decolo at the free throw line. It's been really a huge part of his game, drawing fouls and getting to the charity stripe. Yeah, he had the presence of mind there, George, didn't he? You know, he heard the referee's whistle, and he threw the shot up at the rim to try and get himself a trip. Ewey, touch pass to Ion. Well, that was a physical challenge there by Kyle Hines. He was out of the defensive play, but sprinted back and got a piece of Ion, so he's going to make it difficult for him. No, the, the foul was on the floor, so that was a perfect use of the foul, as that's the first team foul there for Ceska Moscow. A smart play by the team captain. First team foul for Ceska, first personal foul for Hines. End line ball here for Real Madrid. Shot clock winding down here. Yui trying to make something to happen. He'll let fly with a three, and that's off the mark. And Sergio Yui really struggling to find his shooting touch from the perimeter. Rodriguez in transition, lays it up and in as he goes out Ayon. Oh, what a move off the dribble. I mean, did you see the way that he shook Sergio Yui? He just left him in the dust. Yui over two from behind the arc. Just can't get his inside game going. Either another offensive rebound, the second for Real Madrid. Oh, did Tompkins get away with a travel? Here's Ayon. Is shot in the lane, off the mark. And DeColo comes back for Seska. Yeah, again, so smart here, George, by DeColo. He knows that Deck can't stay with him on the perimeter. He attacks him on the dribble and draws another foul. Absolutely, and it's already a third team foul here for Real Madrid. Seska got into the bonus after seven minutes in the first quarter, so th this has been their strategy, just attack, 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 and get to the line as soon as you can. Coaches often talk about preserving fouls, keep them down to the end of the quarter situation can, so you can use them when you need them. But Madrid having committed three team fouls in just over two minutes. How about Sergio Ayu? We, we spoke about it before the game. He's played in four games in the Spanish league, but shot only three for 18 from beyond the arc in those four games. So probably not at his best at the moment as we've seen so far. 
He's got to dig in and defend right now, and he's on the backside. Yeah, smart foul here by Huey. He got pinned in the low post by Alec Peters. You know what's hard to believe, Liam, that Alec Peters is the tallest man on the Tesca roster with two meters and six centimeters. He's the tallest. He's taller than two meters and three Othello Hunter and one meter 96 Kyle Hines. Well, I'm not surprised he's taller than Hines, but that does surprise me that he's the tallest guy on the squad. So it's a small team from Seska. It's hard to believe that I'm coming up with stats that surprise you. I heard you talking out of your sleep in the room next door last night. You were working hard all day. I got to give you your credit. I knew you were going to come out with some real gems. That shot off the mark by Carroll. Another offensive rebound here for Real Madrid. The third this quarter as Yui finally gets something to drop. And that's really important for Real Madrid to get Sergio Yui going. He, they need to get his confidence going. It's not about the skills. It's a lot about his self-confidence at the moment, I think. Rodriguez. Oh, did you see that? Hanging in the air. A three-pointer. What a shot by Chacho. Rodriguez just steps inside the three-point line, knocks it down. Now he's going to dig in and defend against Carroll, who lets fly. And Rodriguez commits a foul. And so it's J.C. Carroll will go to the line now to throw it thrice, but Rodriguez is going to stay calm here. He better, or he's going to get a tee, because I thought it was a lot of contact on that shot against J.C. Carroll. You can see Coach Atuti is trying to calm him down. So it's a closeout here. Didn't really see it. Well, but he did have a chance to land. I thought it was about the landing. Yeah, I didn't give J.C. Carroll a chance to come down. You can see Atuti's right there stepping in. To say to his point guard, stay cool. And there you have the number one free throw shooter as far as percentages are concerned. J.C. Carroll making the first of the three as well as the second one. He shot 95.7% from the free throw line this season. I got a feeling that the commentator's jinx does not work on J.C. Carroll. You've already done it once earlier. There it is. The scales of basketball justice are even. And there you see number one in the white jersey, Fabian Cazer, the player that really had a great championship game with 17 points and three three-pointers. So let's see how he does today. Cazer needs 13 points to get to 1,500 in his career. Nice pass by Pierce, oh. and this time Hines finishes, and you can see what the Real Madrid fans think about that. And that was a quick flush right there by Kyle. I mean, he received the ball and just immediately went up for a strong jam. Well, the Madrid fans are unimpressed. Good defense here by Decolo. Great defense by Decolo as he draws the charge. Oh, he's not only about offense, but Lando Decolo was just sliding his feet as we are tied at 31, getting in front of Fabien Cousin. Two Frenchmen going at it. Two teammates from the French national team as we are looking at the replay and a smart heads-up play by Alec Peters over to Kyle Hines with a strong finish. Rodriguez now will start the offense for Seska. Here's the high ball screen for Higgins, who tries to bisect two defenders. There's a steal from Capazzo. Can he finish in transition? Cozier! Strong to lay it up and in. And a foul here by Rodriguez. It'll be his second. And a 9-1 opportunity here for Fabian Cozier. Great steal by Capazzo. You mentioned it, George. He averaged three steals in the series against Panthenikos. And this one ends with a fast break layup. But over, also over four rebounds per game. I remember Coach Pitino, after one of the games, he said, I don't know how tall this guy is, but he plays as big as any of my centers. We were talking about uh, length, how important length is. You know, wingspan is for basketball players. And so Capazzo defies that reasoning. He's got those quick hands. He comes up with a steal, and it ends up with a fast break transition for Cozier, who misses the free throw. That was another rebound there for Kyle Hines. He's got two, two rebounds in the game today. Two points in it as we hit the midway mark of the second quarter. Peters finds space, and that's what his game is all about. The tallest guy on the floor for Seska. Found a sweet spot in the corner and knocks down the three. You absolutely cannot leave Alec Peters open. He's a catch-and-shoot player. Here's Capazzo up the screen. He'll kick to Cozier. Cozier lets fly with a three. And that falls. 
Just for a moment, it was the first lead for Cesca in the game, and Fabian Cozer comes back with a three-pointer. We are back to the lead of two for Real Madrid. Cesca shooting 50% from behind the arc, 29% for Real, and that inside the lane for Sergio Rodriguez. Up to 14 points after a really disappointing performance last year in the semifinals. Liam, this is all about history. Yeah, Rodriguez with 12 points, make it 14, as you say, on that basket. Trying to atone for what was a difficult semifinal for him last year. The shot from Tavares, or I beg your pardon, Capazzo off the mark. But another offensive rebound here, and Madrid will go again. Oh, behind the back pass from Capazzo. And the mustard's up, the hot dog, and it's all over the floor right now. Coach Lasso won't be impressed by that. That's a seven offensive rebounds. As you see, Nando Decolo driving here and losing the ball as Fabian Cozer tipped it out of bounds from behind. So seven offensive rebounds here for Real Madrid. I said it, game two in round 22 regular season. It was 19 offensive rebounds and truly the story of the game in Moscow. Yeah, certainly a talking point for the coaches is the battle of the boards. That's just if you like, George, the game inside the game. You want to dominate your backboard. Here's the official review right here. It's going to be Alec Peters if he was standing on the line with his foot or not. So a two-pointer or a three-pointer. I think there's a pretty good case here. Yep, it looks like a three-pointer there for Peters. A great camera work. We can see the space. And you can see Ricky Rubio right down there. We just saw him briefly. He used to play for Real Madrid. There he is in the plaid shirt. And the top scorer, Mike James of AX Milano in attendance. Well, we'll take a break here in the second quarter as the players will go to their benches. And in the Fernando Hueso Arena, so there it is. It's 36 each as we get a break here in the second quarter. Sergio Rodriguez, who played from 2010 to 2016 with the Whites of Real Madrid, now lining out for Sesca. He's been influential in this one. 14 points, four of six from inside the arc, two for three from outside it. He's really been the best offensive player for the Sesca Moscow squad. And right now, Rodriguez with more points than anyone else in the arena. Three assists. 14 points in the performance index ranking of 11. He's in his ninth EuroLeague season with the club, but let's listen to the instructions, or we are not going to listen to Dimitris Itudis as the timeout is ending on the sidelines. But let's just go back briefly from my side to Sergio Rodriguez, average 13.8 points in the season for career. His career average is 10 points. Yeah, he's got over 2,400 points and over 1,000 assists in those nine seasons, as you say, partner. Endline ball here as Hackett checks back into the game for Seska. 18 on the shot clock. Decolo, Hines rescreens. Decolo stripped from behind by Tompkins and last touch by Decolo. That was good hands there by Trey Tompkins. Yeah, terrific defense by Tompkins. Just the third turnover against Seska. A lot of contact there between Facundo Campazzo and Daniel Hackett. They got a few words for each other, and Daniel Hackett just raised his elbow and pushed off Campazzo right in front of us. Well, a little bit of needle here in the first half, and it just shows you how important this game is to both sets of players. This for the right to play Anadolu FS. In the final, in the 19th edition of the Modern Euro League, we are here in Vitoria. If you're with us in that first semifinal, welcome here to game two. Ion down on a low post, gets deep. Just got a bad angle to the basket, George, and he can't convert. He got really pushed behind the basket. It was a great defense there by Hines. He used his low body to grab it into the ground. Hines clatters it to Capazzo. Now, this pass stripped by Deck, who'll throw it ahead to Capazzo. Can he finish in transition? He'll wisely back it out as he felt the presence of Will Clyburn. That was a smart play. Will Clyburn is a great athlete. He would have 
gone for the shot block for sure. And now Daniel Hackett gets locked up with Fabian Cozier. Foul called against Hackett. A really tough player, Daniel Hackett. He said it himself. I mean, anytime he steps on the floor, he's looking forward to provide toughness on ball pressure. And you need to do that, don't you, George? Because he, he's, he's teammates with three guys who play in the perimeter who are in the top ten in scoring in the league. So he's got to bring something to the party. And if he can bring some defensive energy, he'll get on the floor. Different angle. That's what he's bringing. That's what Coach Etudis has mentioned so many times. And he said, I told him when he was signing with us that he needs to bring something else than the remaining three players. He'll do anything to get on the floor. Pass inside to Tompkins. And Tompkins gets called for the travel. He did shuffle his feet. He was looking for the weak side to make a pass. And nobody was there. He tried to dribble the ball. Well, George, that's what you get when you wear the fluorescent orange shoes. If you're going to run around in the fluorescent orange sports car, you're going to get some speeding tickets, that's for sure. That's a good point. We've got a foul here off the ball. And Hines is so unselfish now. He set the down screen for Higgins. But look at that right here on the replay. Fabian Cozer just can't get around Kyle Hines. He's so wide and low to the ground. He sets perfect picks. So difficult for the defenders to go around him. That takes some, some force to knock over Kyle Hines, but he'll step to the line of the foul from Fabian Cozer. Real Madrid. Of course, they're in the penalty. The captain of the team and the world ambassador for the one team project. George Hines, Hines. Hines along with Costa Lucas. Of course, Lucas lost in the first semifinal, looking to become only the second player to win four EuroLeague titles. Now, I'm going to ask you who the first player was. This is an easy one for you. Sharunas Yesakevich. There it is. I studied, Liam. <laughs> You try to put me on the spot. I know you wanted me not to know the answer. <laughs> I thought maybe you were taking a nap in the hotel earlier. I can see you've been hitting the books. Of course, Sarunas Jesse Kavich is the coach of Jalkinas. And still we are tied at 36. We've been stuck at that score for a moment. Madrid led by as many as seven points. That lead eradicated. Cozer glides to the basket. And he breaks the deadlock with the deuce. Nice lefty over Ballin Boy. Joel Ballin Boy, the rookie, number three, the first time that we see him on the court, known for his also for his defensive props. A high flyer. Here's Clyburn on the bounce. Good defense by the Argentine Gabriel Deck, who's a new arrival to the club this season. Higgins weaves. Higgins goes at Tavares. And you talked about this, George. You know, you, you can't let Tavares get in your head. You've got to play your game and you got to attack on the dribble drive. And Higgins does just that. You have to draw contact right here. Corey Higgins picks up the dribble and goes immediately into the body of Tavares, who's got the momentum going forward. So the referees at least have a chance to call the foul. Otherwise, it's a block party. And you don't want to be invited to any Tavares block party. That's, no. a, party, that's a party you don't want to go to. Eddie Tavares picks up his second personal foul, so he'll stay on the floor. He's pleading his case there to the baseline referee as Higgins knocks down the first free throw. Eddie Tavares at 53 blocks in the season coming to the final four, which translated into the average of 1.7 per game. Had three, three blocks right in the first quarter. I tell you what, anytime you get a chance to plug one of the big guys, you're going to jump on that train, aren't you? Yep. Those are my people, the dying breed. <laughs> Well, Capazzo, the smallest guy in the gym, starts the offense here for Madrid. A little handoff with Cozer. Oh, nice pass to Cozer. Cozer with a deep basket cut and a pretty pass by Trey Tompkins with the assistencia for the deuce. Well, watch this. It's a deep basket cut from Cozer. The assistencia from Tompkins. The easy lay in for the Frenchman. And this will bring a timeout from Coach Atunis. Well, George, just beautiful basketball there by Real Madrid. The perfect execution of the half-court set. They find themselves up three. And as we anticipated, this game nice and close. Seesawing back and forth. The, the first two games in the season, I think that they're exactly the same way. They were just tied to the last quarter. That's what the players say. I mean, we expect a fight like we always do. This is this just become a 
an absolute fight between these two, a historic fight between the clubs that have 17 titles in between the both teams. What a super slow-mo action, just so beautiful. Just shows you the poetry of the round ball game, the unselfish play here, and not just poetry, but a bit of power as well. So, George, as we were mentioning, in round 10 in Madrid, Seska won 93-88, so a close game. And then in round 22, it was 82-78 in Moscow. But in Madrid, it was all about three-pointers. Did you know that they had more three-pointers scored at halftime, Seska, in that game, in that, that first game in Madrid than the two-pointers? I mean, they just shot the lights out. Well, Higgins had 24 points and Will Clyburn 18 points in that win. Both had four three-pointers in that game. Just really shot the ball well. Here's Clyburn now. And he turned it over. So we got one and a half minutes to go in the second quarter with Real Madrid up three. They are not rushing anything. Seska Moscow, five turnovers. Campazzo to Tompkins who pick and pop. Canesta! Trey Tompkins with a tree play to extend the lead for Real Madrid. Great two moments here. Beautiful pass by Tompkins, followed up by a three-pointer wide open, but nonetheless, a soft touch by Trey Tompkins. Rodriguez gets deep, his pass intended for Clyburn. It's off the mark. It's the sixth turnover against Seska, and now the momentum has swung to Los Blancos. You see the replay of a three-pointer on the other side. Trey Tompkins was involved in the pressure on Sergio Rodriguez as he made a turnover. And he had a few words for him right there. He's fired up. Trey has come down to play. Trey Tompkins with five points so far this evening. Can he could close out? Can he knock down another one? That hits the back of the rim and Clyburn with the rebound. But he found the confidence against Joel Bowen Boy, put it on the floor and shot it off the dribble. Clyburn guarded closely by Randolph. Clyburn now playing point forward and one. That's why he's on the first Euro League team. Will Clyburn enjoying a superb season. You saw it right here against an athlete of Anthony Randolph Calibur. Now he's a look at head right here across in between the legs, and he goes up with a beautiful land. This is such a good matchup. You know, they're players with similar attributes, good length, good mobility, good athleticism, and right there in the mano a mano, that goes to. Will Clyburn who lays it up and in. First foul on Anthony Randolph. About two years in a row that Will Clyburn is the most heavily used man in the roster for Coach Dimitris and Dudis. I'm just taking a look at minutes played by Will Clyburn here. Yeah, he plays 27 minutes a game. He's a real warrior for the horses of Seska. And the number four scorer in the competition. Well, taking a look at points now, partner. It's uh, Fabian Cozer with nine points. He leads Real Madrid. And then it's 14 points for Sergio Rodriguez. Will Clyburn with just six. And you got this ultra slow motion. Look at the beauty of the round ball game. Ticolo hangs in the air. Uh, it's just fantastic images, crystal clear. And look at that, Hines with a great defensive play on Gustavo Ayon. That's poetry in motion, Liam. Yeah, sublime images. And look at the concentration of Sergio Yu. He's still, if you look at his eyes, he's still watching that basketball as it finds the bottom of the basket. How about Fabian Cozer and his play today? I mean, he had a he had a very, very good. He was one of the crucial players in the final four in Belgrade last year. But you didn't say that, but he spent four EuroLeague seasons here in Vitoria on this court. And his best season ever in EuroLeague was here when he averaged double digits, the only double digit average season in his career. Of course, we're in the Fernando Buesa Arena, which is the home of Saskia Basconia. And both of these teams know this gym well. Real Madrid know it, of course, through the domestic league. And as you mentioned earlier, Seska came here and won two playoff games to get themselves to the final four. Final seconds here of the first half. Capazzo with a little hesitation. A show and go! Oh, Capazzo, it wouldn't fall, but Tompkins with the tip in. Tompkins just climbs the garbage. Let's see the closing moments of the second quarter. Clyburn rising. Oh! Oh! Triumchka from Clyburn! A three at the death of the first half. Here it is. Will Clyburn lights it up. Triumph!
Oh, God, the three is good by Clyburn as both teams will head to the halftime changing rooms. Well, stay with us as we break down this first half. There's a show and go by Capazzo and the stick back by Tompkins. With your score at halftime, 45-43 to Madrid. Turkish Airlines. Seven days. B-Win. Endesa. Official global sponsors in association with the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague. Well, if you were with us in the first half, welcome back. If you're just joining us here in Vitoria, a very warm welcome to you. As they say in this part of the world, Arantxadion, good evening. First possession to Real Madrid in the white uniform. Seska digging and defending that man-to-man -man defense in the red. Compazzo's first attempt is off the mark, and Higgins collects the rebound for Seska. That was a good defense there by Rodriguez. He did not try to challenge Compazzo's shot. He just kind of stayed on his shoulder. Higgins finds some space, top of the key. His shot hits the front of the rim. Each team with the possession, neither team with a score. And here's what you were talking about earlier, partner. Madrid love to get out and run their lanes. And Jeffrey Taylor is one of the favorite targets on the fast break. Fernandez oh. fires with a three and he knocks it down, rattles it in. First basket of the second half. Let's get the starting five sorted out here. Seska break their huddle at halftime with Rodriguez, Hines, Higgins, Clyburn, and Korbanov. Got some contact off the ball. We'll see who this foul is against. Madrid start with Compazzo, Tompkins, Randolph, Fernandez, and Tavares. Oh, he caught him with the elbow on the chin by Chacho Rodriguez was trying to get away from the contact as Compazzo likes to get underneath you. And How do you call this one, George? It's a bang-bang play. We have the pleasure or privilege of seeing it in slow motion, but you can see the referees now are conferring. They're going to look at the replay as... No, I guess they're going to let it go. Incidental contact. No, nope. Yep. I thought it was going to go to the replay, but Campazzo does not get his wish as he tried to persuade referees to look at the instant replay. So we go on, Seska ball. Las Pablo Lasso stays calm. Higgins weaves, kicks, great defense by Campazzo as he forces the long three from Rodriguez, can't convert. Hines with the offensive rebound. He joins a party of white jerseys. And you can see right now Campazzo going at it head to head with Rodriguez. Great pass to the base. Whoa! Will Whoa. Clyburn with the cup dunk and one. He just cocked it back and flew through the air. Will Clyburn, he made sure that Captain Sarge was not going to deny this one. Whoa, that's how you have to attack the shot blocker over the top. Well, I love the bounce pass from Corey Higgins, who invites Clyburn to attack the cylinder. And what a great shot there as Tavares commits the foul. That is serious hang time. I think we're going to have a new leader here in the hang time category because he stayed there awfully long there in the air. Well, Clyburn had to stick his teeth back in when he went to the free throw line as he sticks the and one. And all of a sudden, this is an immediate start to the second half. Both teams coming out fighting fit. Rodriguez gets Hines in the air, and he shows his experience to draw the foul. Well, you see a lot of emotions and, and contact on both sides. You know how much is at stake. I mean, there's so much tradition in the matchups between these two clubs. Any time that these two are playing, so many people are watching with excitement. Well, Fernandez will go to the free throw line. We saw the awards at halftime. We saw that Goga Batadze won the EuroLeague Rising Star. Fernandez won that award way back in 2007. Since then, he's lifted the early crown in 2015 and 2018 with Real Madrid. Eight seasons with the club, nine total in Euroleague. His first Euroleague season came with Juventud Barcelona. That's right, and he played with a young Ricky Rubio, who's in the gym tonight. Good crossover dribble by Rodriguez. And you can see the pressure just being picked up by Real Madrid. Facundo Campazzo really doing a good job of trying to pressure the ball. Clyburn shot partially blocked by Randolph. 
Fernandez breaks out of the pack, sideline break, and he's got a mismatch now with Hines. And Korbanov gets called for a foul inside. That was a mismatch right here between Korbanov and Tavares. Tavares was trying to establish himself in the post. But was fouled before he had a chance to do that by Kurbanov. Well, George, I'm just taking a look around this arena. It seats 15,000, and there aren't too many empty seats. It starts to bristle with atmosphere. And Clyburn commits a foul here against Anthony Randolph. He got left out a little bit behind Will Clyburn that you don't see so often. He tried to get back in there, but he just kind of put his hands down and gave a chance to referee who was standing very close by to call the foul. Look at it right here. That's a slight pause in midair as, as Randolph was trying to avoid the shot block, but Clyburn just brings his hand down. Yeah, Randolph adjusted the shot, didn't he? Just the first personal foul on Will Clyburn. Anthony Randolph goes to the line. You talk about Anthony Randolph had a difficult season last year as he missed 15 games total last year with the separated shoulder, came back and also had a difficult final four with only 2.5 points per game scored in those two games. Of course, they won the championship, so it did not matter at the end, but this year he really stepped it up and is the leading scorer of the club. He had a great start to the season, round two MVP with 25 points and 11 rebounds against Milan. We got a foul here as Rodriguez draws it. And Rodriguez is really staying active and aggressive with the ball when he got isolated against Taylor, who's a good defender and an athlete. We said it before. He just immediately attacked him and drew the foul. Chacho is really feeling very confident and looking very confident on the floor today. So possession here for Seska on the sideline. Now Clyburn likes to play almost as a point forward with the ball in his hands. And Capazzo now gets called for some contact. And that was an odd situation because you don't see Nando De Colo posting up so often, but you know, he's got the size advantage, no question about that, over Campazzo in the post. So that's how that happened. Second personal foul on Campazzo, who stands just 1 meter 79. De Colo, 195. And De Colo comes back to get the basketball with less than 10 on the shot clock. Clyburn, little up fake, inside out play with the Colo. It just wouldn't drop. But Hines with an offensive rebound to buy his team another possession. Chacho goes right at Ion, who stands tall, and Capazzo breaks out with the basketball. Now Randolph spins to the baseline, and that won't drop. Pretty move by Anthony Randolph, but just wouldn't fall. That was an early shot on the post up by Randolph. Did not go in. As Gustavo Ayon took place of Eddie Tavares, who went to the bench. Madrid lead by five. They have led by as many as seven. Higgins. And Higgins draws a foul and will go to the free throw line. And I'll tell you what, I mean, a lot of players are losing their composure. They are losing their focus, debating the calls with the referees. And I think this is... The coaches, Pablo Lasso and, and Dimitri Situdis, should calm their players down by taking a timeout or just talking to them individually on the sideline, but this is not helping anything. That's one of those things for Fernandez, George. You know, the, the laws of the game really favor the offensive player, and although he doesn't feel like he committed the foul, he doesn't have good defensive position. Higgins generates the contact and earns himself a trip to the stripe. But it's not only about Fernandez. A lot of lot of other players have been just debating the calls from the referees. I Absolutely mean, right, yeah. This is a huge game. I mean, don't get me mistaken, but they have to keep their cool head. Combatso comes back between the circles to receive the ball from Randolph. Now, he's got Rodriguez on his back. Oh! It. He made it from behind, just pressured by Chacho Rodriguez. It's Combatso. Keeping the eyes on the target. Well, this is an interesting development in the game here, George, because Rodriguez, this could be three. his third foul. It is, yep. It's just flashing on the monitor. And Capazzo used his body well. He's he sealed off Rodriguez. He got in the lane. He got the shot. And it looks like Coach Atunis is going to leave Rodriguez on the floor. Does this surprise you? Three well, I mean, fouls at this stage of the game. He's been so instrumental and influential for the flow of the game of Cesca that I think that he's going to have to take a chance. It's a calculated gamble, in my in my opinion. Higgins bounce pass to Hines, and this time the block 
is from Jeffrey Taylor, and Gustavo Hayon now plays point guard for Los Blancos. The block shot story right here on the matter. Five for Real Madrid and two for Cesca. Madrid look to establish their largest lead of the game. This trip down the floor, Ion shot drops, and there it is, Real Madrid up eight. And this is the Real Madrid basketball, just have fun. Do you see how much positive momentum is flowing on the floor between the players at the moment? They're certainly playing like a well-oiled unit. But a silly foul here, and a technical foul. There oh. it is, you, this is exactly what you spoke about, George. So let's get this sorted out. Who's the personal foul on? And then we've got a technical foul here. I think the technical might be on Fernandez for remonstrating. It's on Taylor, I think, that's what's flashing. On Fernandez, I'm sorry. That's a number four on Rudy. Which is a... So the foul, the personal foul, George, is on Jeffrey Taylor. He picks up his third. And the number four for technical for talking to the referees is Rudy Fernandez. So he's going to have to go to the bench. It's exactly what you spoke about the last trip down the floor. I saw it coming. I saw it coming. It was going to be one of the sides just picking up a technical. The referee just got fed up, and Rudy Fernandez just went too far. There it is. There's the graphic. So just to remind the viewers that a technical foul also counts as a personal foul. So Fernandez picks up his fourth. And that's a huge loss. I mean, Rudy has been playing a very good game. He's got eight points, three assists, two rebounds. I mean, Pablo Lasso needs him on the floor. I mean, the game is really so important that he cannot afford Rudy to be sitting on the bench. Ninth EuroLeague season. That's a player that's got so much experience in his pocket. Well, right now he is in the Casa del Pedro, the doghouse, as he picked up his fourth. He's down the end of the bench. And he's got to compose himself because there's no doubt he'll come back in the fourth quarter and have something to say on the outcome of this game. I got a question for you, Liam. Okay, I'm nervous. Facundo Campazzo, 1 meter 79, you said, right? Yeah, that's what he's listed as. He might ba not be that tall. The question, barefoot or with shoes on? Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, he plays awfully hard and big. He plays bigger than the size. And Ticola with a rare miss from the free throw line. So Ticolo shot the technical foul, and now he goes to the line again to shoot the two team fouls, and there it is. So both teams are in the penalty, and we've yet to hit the midway mark of the third quarter. Cosair is back on in the lineup, number one with the ball at the moment. Compazzo now looks eyeball to eyeball with Higgins. Calls for the high ball screen. Tompkins picks and pops. Compazzo spins in the lane. The scoop. Whoa! Oh! My! Megusta! Compazzo with a little scoop and score. And some English on that one to finish it off. What a play by the Argentine. And a charge right there. Jeffrey Taylor gives up his body for the team as he steps in front of Clyburn, I believe. Look at that right here. Clyburn is driving, looking for an open teammate in the corner. And this was the spectacular shot. It was, he got a lot of the roll. Did you see what kind of a spin he put on that shot? What a shot by Campazzo. We just saw the end of it. Of course, he had to pivot in the lane first. And hopefully we'll see that again. That could be a one of the candidates for the magic moment, as could the Cliver and dunk that we saw earlier. Or the three-pointer in the closing moments of the second quarter. Goes there, trying to slide the ball into the post. Randolph has to step out, and he threads it. It's a double-digit lead now for Real Madrid, up to 11, Liam. Yeah, and Coach Atunis wants to take a timeout. He knows the momentum has swung Madrid's way. The first double-digit lead of this game, some pick-and-pop action by Randolph, who threads the three as both sets of players will head to the benches, and Madrid up 61-50 here at the break. Well, Will Clyburn, great pass here from Higgins, and he rises to send this one home. He dunks this one in traffic. Certainly, he'll love seeing that again, but right now, Seska have got a problem on their hands. They're down 11, plenty of time left in the game, there's no doubt. And George, just a great time out here from Coach Atunis, who really wants to 
calm his team down as we see the super slow motion here. What fantastic images on this dunk by Clyburn. I think Coach Atut is absolutely have to take the time out because we got 15 minutes to play. As you said, it's a lot of time on the hands of, of Ceska players with their ability to score on offense. I'm not concerned, but they have to calm down. They have to understand that they have to execute. They have to stick to that game plan. They cannot get nervous, otherwise the game is lost. Yeah, and Madrid, you know, with the emotions running high on the previous possession, they'll be full of confidence now. After the basket from Capazzo and under three from Anthony Randolph. But as you said it before, right now it's the time to see the execution out of the timeout. Such an important facet of the game. Can you execute out of the timeout? What the coach told you in the huddle. Well, we'll see if uh, the horses of Seska can do that now. Some pressure up the floor by Real Madrid. Both teams have played man to man throughout. The Colo at the point. Higgins. In the high post. Gabriel Deck on the floor here for Madrid. Now into the low post. Clyburn exchanges with Peters. Peters, his shot stripped from behind by Randolph. Did he get it off in time? Alec Peters, he does. Well, Pablo Lasso is appealing. And it is a 24 second shot clock violation, according to the referee. Let's see if they're going to review that. I would assume that they're going to check the instant replay system. That's what's going to happen. Mate Boltauser together with Boris Ridgic. The two referees are going to go and they're going to see exactly what we are seeing. Remember, the ball has to leave the hand of the shooter before oh, the a, shot clock expires. That's a close one, Liam. I don't dare. That is tough. We'd have to zoom in on those images a little tighter to be able to tell that. And Seska could really use this basket. Look at the referees. I mean, that's not easy call to make. I mean, they're going to have to check it from more than one angle, I assume. We've got a chance potentially to go to look at an angle from behind the glass. There's a camera, there's a camera behind the glass. And, you know, George, kudos to our production crew. We're doing just a fantastic job bringing us all the images, all the sounds of the game. And the referees wave it off. So. Coming out of the timeout, Seska come out with nothing, and they're going to have to dig in and defend now as Madrid will bring the ball back their way. That would have been a huge basket right there for Seska. It does not happen, so the deficit stays at 11 for Seska Moscow. Madrid look to turn the screw a little bit here. This possession, Randolph off a back pick, and Othello Hunter gets called for the foul in the perimeter, which sends Fabian Cozier to the free throw line. Both teams are in the bonus, and it's a question how long can coach Dimitris Itudis keep Sergio Rodriguez on the bench? Yeah, you know, because he has those three fouls, but the game now is swung decidedly over to Madrid. Does he take, a, as you were saying earlier, a calculated gamble and bring him back onto the floor? It is still an eternity left. We still have a whole fourth quarter to play, but and four minutes here in the third quarter, you don't want the game to get away from you. I would assume if the difference gets to 15 points or bigger, I think he's going to be left with no other choice but to put him into the lineup. I, you know, funnily enough, with the Colo, Higgins, and Cliver, and you've got enough scoring on the floor, but Rodriguez makes him tick. Cliver spins in the lane, and a blocking foul here on Anthony Randolph. You know, if there's one player that has really found difficult to find his rhythm offensively, it's been Corey Higgins. I love this, though, George. You know, you're struggling. You're struggling to score. You're in a deficit. And dribble penetration, getting contact, and a trip to the line, so important for Seska. That's what you have to. I think that Real Madrid is just doing a great job of plugging the holes and really making it difficult for the penetrators. You're going to have to expect some contact, like Will Clyburn did at that time. If you're in the bonus, I mean, you're going to try to get to the free throw line. That's been a mantra here for Tesco the whole season. I mean, they used it in the playoffs in the regular season. They just tried to shoot as many free throws as they can. Well, Clyburn makes one of two. He shot 75% from the free throw line this season. Tonight, Seska, 16 for 22. So good production from the line. Cozier on a hard drive, and he gets it to drop. 
What a tough shot here on the single coverage. Fabian Cozier just takes it to the, to the rack, and he's up to 13 points. He has not missed a two-pointer or a three-pointer. Five for five from the field. Yeah, and it's all off the bench. He's got six minutes of play. Oh, good production, but there you go. You go to your star, and DiColo comes back with a timely three for Seska. He's still in the single digits and scoring up to nine, though. Now, though, DiColo. Capazzo in a two-man game with Ion. Now Cozer gets a bump from his national team teammate, Decolo, and Fabian Cozer having all kinds of joy on the bounce. He goes to the free throw line again for two more shots. He likes to go on the left hand, George. You know, last time he went with a little drive, it was off the left hand. And, you know, Decolo knows him so well. He knows him from national team. Maybe try to force him to the right. Yeah, but he's such a strong player, Liam. I mean, he's got long arms, just really strong in his legs and the and the midsection of his body. So not easy if he gets going to stop him. You know, you have to do it before he gets into motion. Then he's got the advantage of Nando De Colo for sure. I didn't know you could talk about perimeter defense. You've got an array of skills, defend inside and out. It is a lot easier to talk about it than to do it, actually. <laughs> Thank you very much. Daniel, Daniel Hackett steps in here for Seska. He'll certainly provide some defensive energy. Hunter hands off to DeColo, who draws a crowd. It won't fall. Uh, DeColo earns himself a trip to the line. But Nando clearly understands the urgency for him to step up and to provide a similar performance than he did in the third and the fourth playoff game against Basconia. As you see him here, drawing the foul. Strong hands from DeColo as he was able to break through the challenge and get the shot up on the rim. I'll tell you what, Liam, if I'm analyzing the third quarter, I really think that the player that had so much influence on the third quarter, on the development of the third quarter, is Facundo Campazzo. If you remember, he was the player that's starting to pick up the on-ball defense. He really got in the face of Chacho Rodriguez, and he, I mean, it, it was, it just spread to the other players, and the intensity, the defensive intensity of Real Madrid as the, as the unit just went up two notches. Yeah, there's no doubt about it, that he's been a spark, Capazzo, trying to still make something happen on the defensive end. Sergio Yui will step in now for his first action here in the second half. Three minutes still to play in the third quarter. As you mentioned, on this floor, George DiColo had 27 and 28 points in games three and four in that playoff series. And remember, Seska lost the first game they've lost in the playoff under a 2Ds in Moscow in game two. Yeah, there was, they, were, they were in shock, and they said three days we were watching videos, and, and, and we were just analyzing the situation and criticizing each other. Well, great response from them in the playoffs. Can they respond here now in the final four semifinals? The stakes are higher. The stage is brighter. Tompkins finds space at the top of the key and exchanges the ball with Sergio Yui. Yui now with a mismatch on Hunter will settle for the jump shot. It's short. Good stop by Seska. That was a solid defense there by Hunter. He stayed in front of you. So here's the answer to your question. Rodriguez back in the game. Can't score here, pass ahead to Cozer. Little Euro step by Cozer, and he converts! That is beautiful, the way that he steps around Hackett. Did you see that almost in full sprint? Great finish by Cozer, who commits a foul on the other end. He does not like that, as he felt that he had his hands straight up. I, it will be interesting to see the replay on that situation, as we're going to have a chance. That was the start of the fast break, and that's Cozer. Who's turning to the specialist for the final four as yeah, last year? Absolutely. He had probably two of his best games in Belgrade. Today he certainly has brought it on strong. 16 points so far. Yeah, but look at the, the shooting charts. Five for five from two and one for one from three. If he wouldn't miss the two free throws, he would have been perfect. Yeah, it's been an outstanding performance by the Frenchman. Decolo now back to the line. Nando Nicolo nets both free throws. I just see all time for Final Four, over 98% from the line in all the Final yeah, Four it's, appearances. It's just, it's remarkable. And you want your point guards to be so efficient from the free throw line, especially when the game is close down the stretch. 
Seska trying to get this one close to Daniel Hackett with a good defensive hustle play. Deflection from Hackett. Shot clock running down. Huey! Will it count? It does! And Huey! Getting a lot of contact, getting a bounce. He was forced to fall on his back almost. Look at that one more time. It's Tocolo who steps up to try and take, take the charge. And the contact just on the side of the body for Decolo. But it was a beautiful move by you as he managed to change the direction he was going into the sliding motion and draws the foul on the side of Decolo, which I think that the referees had no other option but oh, to I think call it's it. a great call. Absolutely right. When that contact is on the side, Decolo had good position, didn't he? But the contact is on the side of his chest. And right now, Decolo finds himself back on the bench. He's got three fouls. No, he's got only two, but nonetheless, he's at the bench. Great hustle play inside. And we've got a foul here. I thought it was a tie ball right there, and the referees were calling the jump ball, but... I think the foul that's... is on Ion. Yep. That was a big scuffle there, as the ball was being fumbled on the floor, and the fight between... The fight for the ball, I should say, between Ion and Rodriguez. Here's the penetration. He loses the ball a bit. Oh, right here. Yeah. That's the body. You cannot do that. That was a full body slam. First down in American football. <laughs> there it is. He comes up behind and he commits the foul. Now, Rodriguez has to be smart. He's got those three fouls. And there's still plenty of time in this one. George, if you're, if you're Seska and you're down double digits here, just trying to get this game back to single digits to start the fourth quarter to make the difference more manageable. Oh, I can imagine that's the game plan here for Coach Adudis. Just stay calm and stay with the game plan. You cannot panic. Goes there. Lost the handle. And again, a good defensive stance here by Seska. They caused the turnover, the backcourt violation. And those, exactly what you need to do if you're Seska. Get stopped, so now they're going to turn it into points. And those are the small things that can matter big at the mo at the end. And so it's only six turnover for the game for Real Madrid, who's playing a, a sharp game by all means. Yeah, just read my mind. I went to look at that stat as well. They've been outstanding with the basketball, have Madrid. Just those six turnovers. Seska now trying to turn the last one into points. Higgins with a little jab step. Goes to the rack! But it's a fellow Hunter! Oh, oh, Hunter! Hunter, the garbage man, just goes above the rim and collects the garbage. Well, Othello with a timely basket for Seska. And they've got the game now down to nine. Dewey, guarded by Hunter. Feathers a pass inside to Ion. Oh, great basket cut by Gabriel Deck and a good pass by Ion for the easy two. Uh, what a play there by Gabriel Deck, who's a rookie in the early, just really Came on the floor to Suspire. It's Chacho Rodriguez on the other side with the three-pointer. Just never say die. A perfect response by Seska. And now the difference is eight. Wouldn't they love to go into the huddle in touch? After three quarters of play, Huey looks at the clock. Shot clock now under 10. It's going to have to deal. Huey rises, spends a pass into Ion. Ion finds himself in a sea of red jerseys. And he commits the seventh turnover for Real Madrid. And that's a theme defense. I thought it was a split second there for Gustavo Ayon to go up with the shot, as you see that last situation and the collection of Othello Hunter above the rim. Nobody boxes him out as Ayon is trying to challenge the shot by Higgins. Here we are, last possession of the third quarter here. 24 seconds on the game clock. 24 seconds on the shot clock. Just the slightest differential. Rodriguez wants to while down some time. He'll find Hackett who rides the screen of Korbanov and gives it back to Rodriguez. Rodriguez now, bounce pass down the lane to Hunter who can't catch it. It was the right idea. The pass just off the mark by Rodriguez. And I wonder, do we have a kick here by a Real Madrid player? I think that there was about a 0.5 second differential between the shot clock and the game clock, so I would assume that it was a 24 second shot clock violation and we may be going to get reset of 0 0.8 seconds, that should be, if I'm correct. Yep, 0 0.6 it should be. So we should get one more possession here for Real Madrid before we close out this third quarter. It was a good pick at the top of the key by Hunter. Just a 
difficult pass from Rodriguez. Well, we are in Vitoria. This is the 19th edition of the Turkish Airlines Air League in the modern era. And it is a 24 second shot clock violation. There should be 0.8 on the clock. And so Madrid will get a chance perhaps for a long pass down the floor with a chance to score. Now Rodriguez, of course, comes off the floor with those three fouls for Seska. Doesn't want to pick up his fourth. So good substitution by Tudis. And look at Gustavo Ayol, going to try to make the long pass. Rodriguez, uh, the pass to Sergio Yui. Well, you wonder, why didn't they bring Facundo Capazzo on the floor for that? He's made those two long shots in the EuroLeague this year. But it goes for nothing. And at the end of three quarters of play, Real Madrid up 73-65 over Seska Moscow. Well, highlights in the third quarter of the second semifinal between Seska Moscow and Real Madrid. Madrid led by as many as double digits in this quarter. Seska Moscow able to claw it back. And that a sensational play here by Will Clyburn as he attacks the rack and goes straight at Tavares. Higgins, a little bounce pass to Higgins. Great block by Taylor. One of a handful of blocks as a team for Real Madrid. They've got six blocks as a team, which is terrific defense from Los Blancos. And this, a candidate for the basket of the night. Look what it means to the Real Madrid fans. Pick and pop action here from Anthony Randolph. And Fabian Cozer has been outstanding in this quarter. As you see the stick back there from Othello Hunter. George, the score, 73-65. It's eight, it's manageable for Seska. Absolutely, I mean, if you look in the shooting chart, seven for 14 from three, if they start hitting from the outside, again, if they find a way to score, they can be back into the game very quickly. Well, this is Mike James who wins the Alfonso Ford top scorer trophy in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague this year. He played for Olympia Milano. He averaged 19.8 points per game, five more than any other scorer. He scored 595 points this season, the third highest ever. What a season it was for the American in his first year with Milan. What a difference, as you said, five points more than the second player in the standings, which is none less than Corey Higgins, who's on the floor at the moment. Of course, on the Seska side, Nando Nicolo won this competition previously. They'll certainly need his offensive potency in the fourth quarter as they find themselves down eight. Nicolo right now on the bench. And first possession here to Seska, who come out to start the fourth quarter with Hunter. Rodriguez, Clyburn, Higgins, and Daniel Hackett. Rodriguez keeps his dribble alive. Hackett now, top of the key, guarded by Tompkins. Hunter, baseline jump shot, good. That was a tough shot for Othello Hunter. We don't see him making so many of those jump shots. You rather know him as a finisher in the lane, so a, a bonus here from Othello Hunter on the first possession. Madrid start this fourth final quarter with Cozer, Ion, Gabriel Deck, Fabi, Fabian Cozer going to work. Another basket from the Frenchman, Tompkins, and Sergio Yui round out the starting five. That was, for a Madrid. Good, that was a good thing by Cozer. He was going against a good block, shot blocker in Hunter, but just absolutely without respect. Cozer with 18 points, the top scorer for Madrid. Still has not missed a shot from the field. Six for six for two and one for one from three. Yeah, the only shot he's missed, he missed two free throws. He's three for five from the free throw line. His performance index rating of 17. And you know he scored only five times in double figures the whole season. How about that? I, I'm just surprised at how impressive the depth of your statistical knowledge is. That's amazing. You've been doing your work, partner. Now, can Seska go to work? Rodriguez on the bounce, gets in the lane and scores. Another creative thing here by Chacho Rodriguez, who is up to 19 points, being the highest scorer of the game on both sides. 
Rodriguez with a foul here on Sergio Yuin. You know, George, he's played so well, Rodriguez. He's an experienced player. But this, a foul from behind with a reach, something that he's got to guard against. Uh, it's not easy because it, there are not so many players as explosive as you see it right here on the replay. Sergio Yu just puts the Jets down, puts his head out, and he's so strong with his lower body. Yeah, I know what you're saying. He gets feet on the dribble drive, fair enough, but it's the reach from behind. You know, at that stage, let him go and try to preserve a foul. I guess you're right, but maybe frustration took better of Chacho Rodriguez. But I mean, he's going to have to be extra careful So from now on. Easier said than done from the commentary position. Now Rodriguez drops a dime inside to Hunter, who lays it up and in a pocket pass from El Chacho. I guess a good point is this: these two points from, from Hunter just completely worked out there by Rodriguez. Fabian goes there, exchanges the ball with Sergio Yui. Yui, again, a pass intended for Ione. And you wonder now, George, has Yui lost his confidence in his jump shot? Because this is the third time now he's tried to feather a pass inside when he had a clean look at a three. Well, he's 0 for 4 from so far. As he said before, in the four games that he's played in the Spanish championship, he was 3 for 18. So if you combine it as 3 for 22, certainly that's not too much confidence into the statistics. It's another stop for Seska. Higgins. Sergio Yui trying to make a contribution defensively with his for his team. Higgins will retain possession. That shot blocked. There was six seconds left. It'll be baseline ball for Seska. That was a good recovery there by Gustavo Ayon, who patrolled the lane, stayed on 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 the back of Corey Higgins and mentioned managed to block the shot to out of bounds. Rudy steps back in for Real. He's got those four fouls. Higgins rises, can't convert inside on the contested shot. Oh, great pass to Ione, who spreads it. Great sharing of the basketball by Madrid. Now, Sergio Yui has to step up. He had to shoot it, but he left it short. Ticolo goes to the Jets and lays it up and in. That's a tough break there for Sergio Yui. 0 for 5 from 3, and on the other side, it is. Seska scores a quick two-pointer on the fast break. That definitely stings, but he was so wide open, he had to take it. The easy basket for DeColo, who stepped back into the game for Seska. Ion. Look at Daniel Hackett dig in and guard. Now Sergio Yui. It's still short. You wonder now how long does Lasso leave him in the ball game? I think Facundo Campazzo is already sitting there at the scores table, so substitution of the next dead ball. Clyburn kicks. Hunter rises. In and out. And you can hear the Seska fans behind us over our left shoulder groan as that one just wouldn't drop. You don't see too many three pointers shot by Hunter, but he was wide open and stepped right into the shot. Can he make something happen on the bounce? He's going to try another three. It's the same result. And Lasso can't get him out of the game quick enough. He's going to make a smart play, make a foul, and go to the bench, Sergio the former MVP. Was the EuroLeague MVP in 2017. He's obviously not in his best form. He hasn't played in the EuroLeague since round 29. Didn't play in the playoffs. And Capazzo will come in now to spell him. As you see, Sergio with the towel over his head. Campazzo now will guard the Colo. He has three fouls. He needs to be careful. The Colo, you know, George, that is the Colo at his best. You know, he uses that screen. He's so quick on the dribble. And he goes to the free throw line again tonight for another trip. And absolutely, I mean, he took it at Tavares. Just kind of stopped. Look at the slow mo replay right here. He was on the side of him, felt him on his side, so he just kind of paused in the motion and waited for Tavares to collide into him. Tocolo has been to the line nine times. He's eight for nine. Half his points come here. And now nine for 10 with 16 points. So costly there for Real Madrid at last minute that Sergio Yui was on the floor against his will. I mean, you saw that he wanted to get out, but there was no chance to go out. Well, something happened in the arena. We had a noise in the arena. Decolo 
Missed the shot. And a level. Sounded like a horn went off in the arena. It distracted Decolo. And the referees are going to award him another free throw. I have to agree with Seska. I mean, the level of the noise was was so high that I think it really did distract the shot for, for Decolo from free throw. Well, he dispatches the second. Decolo now 10 for 11 from the line. And Lasso gets a technical foul. Well, it's the emotion that you're talking about, partner, and right now it's brimming over for Real Madrid. I think Lasso is trying to say that he was yelling at his own bench. But Ad Panther awarded him a technical foul. What a situation. Right here you see the reaction by, by Pablo Lasso. So the negative emotion or the disrespectful emotion was there. But he's trying to plead his case that it was against his against his bench. Yeah, he threw the towel, and it, to be fair, you know, he was facing the bench, George, you know, and he wasn't facing the referee. But in any event, it's a technical foul, so. I'll tell you what, Liam, though, I don't think he should have thrown down the towel. I think that that was a chance here for Ant Panther to call the technical foul. Well, with the new interpretation of the technical foul rule, so it's just one free throw. And possession yes. retained with Real Madrid. And it's a foul now on the inbounds. I mean, emotions are just flying sky high at the moment. Well, here's the question I have because, George, the foul is before the ball comes inbounds. And so you wonder is that an unsportsmanlike foul? But it's play on. I think it happened just at the moment when the ball was being inbounded. We got four fouls on Tavares, Dooley, and we missed that. So Walter Tavares is playing with four fouls as well. That last foul was on Corey Higgins. Cozer steps back with a three and hits the front of the rim. And Seska with a stop now. And all of a sudden, the arena comes alive. The Seska fans find their voices as they try to implore their team on. Well, it was an 11-point deficit or the lead for, for Real Madrid, and all of a sudden, the momentum is completely on the side of Cesca. Right now, George, Real Madrid are the architects of their own demise. They've got to keep their emotions in check. Capazzo gets called for the foul here. So that's number four, yep. Campazzo. We got three players on Real Madrid playing with four fouls. Fernandez, on the floor at the yeah. moment. Fernandez, Tavares, and Campazzo. Decolo, step back three is short. And Tompkins rises for the rebound. Oh, that would have been a huge shot for Cesca if they would have taken a lead. Just two points in it. Campazzo turns the corner. And a foul here on Corey Higgins. That was a lot of contact, physical foul there. Corey Higgins just made sure that foul was fouled there by Campazzo as they can tangled up their arms on the penetration. A very unhappy and emotional Pablo Lasso here on the slow motion replay. Still probably very unhappy about the technical call, technical foul call. Well, high drama here on the high European stage. In the early league final four, a chance to get to the final to play against FS. Tompkins wants to bump and grind with Higgins. An easy basket by Trey Tompkins off the goaltending call here against Othello Hunter. Just half a step too late there from the weak side. Othello Hunter comes across the lane. Look at it right here. Good patience by Tompkins. It goes off the backboard, so immediately that's a technical foul. I mean, technical basket, I'm sorry. Yeah, goaltending call against Othello Hunter. Now, Clyburn, he wants to go at Fernandez. Fernandez with the four fouls has to be soft defensively, but Will Clyburn can't convert. That was a good situation for Cesca. Single coverage, Will Clyburn, a good post up player. Tavares now with nine rebounds. He has those four fouls. Fernandez, shot clock running down. Rudy, let's fly with a three. It's in and out. Still a four point lead for Madrid. Cesca coming out, the ball is in the hands of Will Clyburn. He tries to go, it's a mismatch against Trey Tompkins. He's gonna go for three. Whoa! No! 
another spectacular three-pointer by Will Clyburn. Will Clyburn knocks down a three, and Pablo Lasso says, give me a timeout, por favor. As Real Madrid go to the benches, they led by as many as 11. And now, Seska right back in it as both teams go to the timeout. Well, tonight's seven days magic moment. The duck here from Will Clyburn, who goes at Eddie Tavares with authority. Great pass by Higgins, the bounce pass invites the attack and Clyburn's got one thing on his mind and that's to get to the rack as Tavares commits the foul one of his four tonight's seven days magic moment look at the slow motion here George just absolutely fantastic images that is incredible athleticism about Liam I'm looking at the stat screen right in front of me and look at the stat sheet by Nando De Croix as we see the foul situation three players with four fouls on the side of Real Madrid and Sergio Rodriguez on the side of Cesca Masca with four fouls but look at Nando De Croix slowly how slowly he has become the leading scorer for Cesca with, oh, I'm sorry Sergio Rodriguez got 21 but he's leading in performance index rating with 21 he's got 11 free throws made so Nando De Croix is really making his presence felt even though we felt he had a slower game yeah he had the four points I think at half time but he's certainly come alive here as the game has been on the line. Capazzo's shot, no good. And I got another question for you, George. Why isn't Fabian Cozier on the floor here for Real Madrid? You've got Fernandez with four fouls who has to be soft defensively. Capazzo with four fouls. And Tompkins commits the foul on the perimeter. That was a tough decision that Pablo Lasso had to make. And he put Rudy Fernandez for his offensive props. And the way that he played in the first half, if you ask me, he put him back on the floor. A tough call. I absolutely agree with you. Goes there now with 18 points. Fernandez with eight. As Clyburn will toe the line. Missed the first one. Will Clyburn, 17 tonight. He's four of seven from the line. 75% free throw shooter. We are tied at 80, Liam. Knotted up at 80 each with just over three minutes to play here in Vitoria. We're in the capital of the Basque country in the second final four and the Turkish Airlines early. The winner of this one gets to play FS in the final who won earlier tonight. We've got a foul here against Corey Higgins. That's far away from the basket. Yeah, these fouls hurt, don't they, George? You're, you know, you're right on the half court line and you commit a foul when your team but at least for Cesca Moscow, it was only the fourth team foul, so Campazzo is not going to go to the free throw line. It's going to be ball out of bounds for Madrid. Ball reversal here to Tompkins, who looks into Randolph. DiColo guarding in a low post. Randolph's got a seal. Great defense by DiColo. Oh, yeah. Tompkins threads the three. Well, DiColo played great defense, George, on Anthony Randolph in a low post. It's where Tompkins was trying to get it. But it's but Je Jeffrey. stepped up to knock down the three. That was Jeffrey Thaler right here with a three-pointer. And for the season, he's shooting only 38.3%. So a really huge three from a player that is not known. I mean, he's an offensive breaking player the guy the player that's very athletic and likes to make curls into the lane that's yeah. how I know Jeffrey Taylor yeah. but I don't know him as a spot up three-point shooter well it's the first three he's made tonight so timely three from Taylor as his team reestablished that lead and look at Real Madrid I mean as you said two players with four fouls are staying on the floor So another question, I'm going to make you earn your money. At Tootie's, it's an offensive possession here, and he keeps Rodriguez on the bench. I think with Nando De Colo, the way that he's come alive, and with Clyburn being so dominant offensively, I think he's got good, or perfect two options here with these two, two players. De Colo with 18 points. Clyburn matches that with 18. Rodriguez with 21. 
Corey I, Higgins has been the one who's quiet in that triumph in that triumvirate with just five points. But I think you just have to stay with the, the with the five players that brought you back to the game. And yeah. this is this is the yeah. five that, that are on the floor at the moment for Coach Duty. So it makes sense to me. So the five on the floor for Seska. Got them back in the game. Higgins. Returns the ball to DeColo. DeColo trying to find a crease, trying to find a seam. Kicks. Higgins rises for the three. It hits the heel, the rim. Othello Hunter with the stick back. That's a way to stay with the ball. Othello Hunter, a huge offensive rebound and immediate putback. Othello Hunter with his second offensive rebound. He's got eight points for Seska. You can see the battle of the boards there. The edge to Real Madrid. Capazzo now. Top of the key, trying to find some space. Anthony Randolph rises for his three. That's off the mark. Tompkins keeps it alive. Taylor thought about it. Drops a dime. Oh, Kel. oh, Taylor drops a dime to Anthony Randolph, who does the rest. But look, did you see the fight by Trey Tompkins on the offensive rebound? I mean, he just earned a second chance points right here. This is the kick, and Randolph. With a strong finish over Hunter. Great look away pass by Taylor to find a streaking Randolph for the two. Higgins goes to the rim. Corey Higgins lays it up and in. That was an acrobatic move by Corey Higgins. He avoided the block by from Trey, Trey Tompkins, who was coming across the lane. Madrid here with just under two to play, up a penny. Compazzo finds Randolph and gets the ball back. Shot clock now at five. Compazzo is going to have to deal. Goes on the bounce with the left hand. Tough shot. Hunter grabs a defensive rebound for Seska. And Seska now have got a chance to get their noses in front with a minute 30 to play here in the semifinal. Seska really played a smart defense. They, they did all they could do to stay out of the falling position. Ticolo in space. Let's fly with a three. And it rattles home. Trioczka! Leach now, what a three for Dicolo! What a, the, the player that we predicted was going to make the huge impact, coming alive in the second part of the game, taking a crucial shot. How many how many minutes has been that Seska has been in front? Oh, Dicolo, he bounces. He'll find space. How do you leave him? George, how do you leave him alone on the screen and roll? Well, and he knocks down a three. They played it. They went behind the screen, and Randolph was trying to recover there with his long arms. It was a contested shot, but nonetheless, he had a lot of room to take. And a good look at the basket there. Well, Decolo is two for five from behind the three-point line. And right now, he's got his team up a basket. See if we can listen to Paolo Lasso here, George. George, I'm going to ask the question again. Cozier stays on the bench. Cozier with 18 points on 15 minutes. And look at Sergio Ayu. He's coming through the floor after having a very difficult moments in the game in the fourth quarter. That's a lot of confidence that Pablo Lasso's got in his star player. So you see the two coaches there on the split screen. We mentioned in our opening commentary that Itudi's seven wins and just three losses in the head-to-head -head against Lasso. Now, between the circles, Compazzo, just over a minute to play. Two points in it, it's a one-possession game. Randolph, down in a low post, got a mismatch with Higgins, spins to the baseline, left it short, the second attempt won't go, and Hunter cleared the boards for Seska. Seska with a chance now to make it a two-possession game. Well, what a huge defensive star by Ceska. Moscow finished with a good defensive rebound there as Randolph was really trying to get there. Both teams are in the penalty. No one has a foul to give. Shot clock now at six. Ticolo lost the handle. Well, Anthony Randolph deflected it first, and Compazzo was going to get the ball, the loose ball. We're going to get the privilege of seeing it again. It's the fifth foul on Capazzo, and he's got to keep his composure. This game is in the balance. Well, Randolph George tipped it first. DeColo's trying to get it. 
He hit him on the face. Yeah, you see it right here. There. And the referees are spot on. You know, we get to see it here in slow mo. But the Colo now makes it three. This shot to make it a two possession game with 45 seconds left. Without Campazzo on the floor, let's not forget that. So now you need Sergio Yui at the point. George, did they look for a three here? Madrid, or they just want to get a quick basket? I go for the two. Tompkins, Kleiber and closes out. Now Randolph sets the ball screen. 30 seconds to go here in the semifinal. Sergio Yui to Fernandez. Daniel Hackett! And Daniel Hackett with an ill-advised foul. They Just had exactly it. what you don't want. The shot clock's under five. 4.4 seconds on the shot clock. You see right here, Rudy is not going anywhere. He does not see the basket even. But Daniel Hackett is getting a little bit off balance there. Tried to meet him with his chest. So again, George, the question, Hackett's on the floor for his defense. Does Rodriguez come back out? He stays on the floor, on the bench for Coach Atutis. Now big free throws here for Rudy Fernandez. Fernandez knocks down the first. Fernandez, a good free throw shooter, 81%. This to get the difference down to two. So Coach Atutis will take a timeout. Now George, remember, he has the option whether to advance the ball into his quarter court or take it out the full length of the floor. 89-87, Seska up. But, but he's got such a luxury coach at duties with having very such a great free throw shooters. Let's listen to him in the in the timeout. Yeah, George, I think he's going to bring. There could be four guards on the floor yeah. at the same moment. He's not going to risk anything. He just needs to inbound the ball, avoid the double and the turnover, and just wait for the foul. This is all he needs. He's going to bring Othello Hunter out. Rodriguez comes in. Now, Rodriguez, George, shoots 87% from the charity stripe. We know that Nando De Colo's 95%. Higgins, 89%. Will Clyburn. It's probably the weakest one, 75%. As you see, Ricky Rubio, wouldn't you love to have him on defense right now if you're Real Madrid? So Seska are gonna bring the ball in the full length of the floor, which means they get a full 24 second shot clock, George. If they go into the front court, it goes to 14. So Seska wanna keep the ball in their hands. Real Madrid come out in some man-to-man -man pressure. They're not gonna foul this guy. Now Hackett, here's the guy you wanna get if you can. Chacho. And Tavares commits the foul. That will be his fifth. So we'll say adios to Walter Tavares. He had to do it. He, he had to take the foul for the team. He knew it was going to be his fifth, but so time was night on the side of Real Madrid. Yeah. And here's the reason why Rodriguez comes onto the floor for his ball handling and his free throw shooting. Korbanov's going to step in for Seska. These are huge free throws. This is Waiter at the table time. Clyburn right now is getting some treatment. You can't see on the screen, but down on the Seska bench. He's with the physio. Rodriguez makes the first, knocks down the second. So Rodriguez puts two nails in the coffin of the club that he represented between 2010 and 2016. And look what it means to the traveling fans from Seska. I'm just keep looking at Will Clyburn, who's he keeps shaking his head. So you have to hope that there's nothing too serious with him. He took a lot of impact on that foul. Not sure what happened if it's a shoulder or head as you're looking at the replay of the Othello Hunter shot. Well, George, now from Madrid's point of view, you, you got to get a three quick. You know, that's your first option. You want a three as quick as you can. If not, you'll have to take a two. 
Four points the difference as you see Pablo Lasso. Well, and if you just if you just got Moscow, you don't want to allow Real Madrid to shoot a three pointer. So you take a foul. I mean, don't don't allow them to get into that three three point shooting situation. I know what you're saying. You just don't want the clock to stop, though, if you're Seska. If you, you make that foul now, all of a sudden they got time to put points on the board without the clock going. Oh, what a character here for Ceska Moscow. I mean, they did it twice in the playoffs here in Victoria, both down in game three and game four in the playoffs. They came back again today, Liam. They were down by 11 yeah. points. D down 11 in the third quarter, and they slowly came back into it. That was 15 minutes. It was a timeout, and we said it's 15 minutes. There's a timeout. There's still plenty of time. Plenty of time. They just cannot panic. Exactly what happened. So much character for the Ceska team. So JC Carroll's on the floor for Madrid. Can he get a quick three? Sergio Yui, let's fly. Oh! Got it. Canasta! Sergio Yui. He hasn't made a three all night. And finally, that one is nothing but net. It's one for eight for Sergio, one of his spectacular shots. So Madrid shots. press up the floor. And Fernandez with the quick foul. So that's his fifth. He'll go out. And now Corey Higgins will lock the length of the floor to step to the line, an 89% free throw shooter. That's what I said. What a luxury for Coach Itudis to have such experience and good shooters. That was the three-pointer by Sergio Yui under pressure. Look at the spectacular shot. He's known for those shots in his career. How many times we've seen that in the past? Well, George, this is waiter at the table time. You're out to dinner with your best girl, and the waiter brings the bill. Do you have any money in your wallet? Does Higgins have any basketball money in his wallet? Has he been shooting free throws at home? There's the first one. Now, this one to make it a three-point game, and surely, if Higgins makes this one, you would expect Seska to foul here now as Madrid bring it in. George Madrid are out of timeouts. That's a huge factor too. Higgins makes it three. That's 89% free throw shoot for you. Corey Higgins, the leading scorer of the team and the second in the competition. So Hines comes in and he signals to his teammates with his arms. It looks like he wants to commit a foul. They'll wait till the ball comes across half court. Yui, let's fly. It won't go. So Sergio Yui with a chance to send it to overtime. It wouldn't drop. And now commits the foul with 2.2 seconds left. What a closing moments of the game. How did Sergio you get off a three-point? I know it was a wild shot, but still, I mean. It's a great question, and I think it's Corey Higgins who's running alongside him, and Higgins had the presence of mind not to foul him as he was shooting it. Well, your heart goes out to Sergio Yu. He's not at his best, and that, George, is a telling picture for me. You know, Cozer, who am I to criticize Pablo Lasso? But Fabian Cozer has got 18 points on 15 minutes. And he hasn't been on the floor for the last five minutes. Well, Higgins makes the difference four. And Higgins now has a chance to redeem Seska after the loss in 2018 in Belgrade. At this very stage of the competition, Madrid won 92-83. Luka Doncic, of course, was with Madrid on that night. The heaving hope is on the way from Sergio Yui. And our second semifinal here in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague 2019 goes to Seska Moscow as Coach Atutis lifts his personal record against Pablo Lasso to eight and three. And Seska with the win have earned the right to play Andalou FS on Sunday night in the finals. And you have to talk about perseverance and self-belief of Ceska Moscow really developed so much character to stay with their game plan, to stick to the game plan in the toughest of the moments in the semifinal today. Turkish Airlines. Seven days. B-Win. Endesa. Official global sponsors in association with the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague.